Hi, I'm with Paul Stamets, and he uh, owns a company that specializes in the cultivation of fungi. Um, and uh, you can go to his website at fungi.com. Um, and Paul's here to talk to us a little bit about uh, how fungi actually can help clean the uh, clean up the BP uh, oil spill. So, Paul. Yeah, what uh, people may not realize is that fungi build soils, and a lot of people know that fungi are decomposers. And what that means is they can take large molecular complexes. You know, plants are made of fibers constructed of lignin and cellulose, and fungi di digest them and they break them down into smaller and smaller units. Well, those um, cells are held together with carbon-hydrogen bonds, and the mycelium produces digestive juices that breaks those bonds apart, like little Pac-Mans going around, and those same bonds hold hydrocarbons together. So it's a wonderful quirk of nature that the mycelium, which is a fine fibrous web-like substance that grows in the ground, and anybody right now can go outside and find a stick or a log and tip it upside down, you'll see mycelium everywhere. Mm -hmm. And the mycelium will digest the wood and create soil. And that process of decomposition then fuels all sorts of other life cycles. And so these fungi that we grow, and we've been doing this for about 12 years, have been breaking down oil, uh, uh, diesel, uh, petroleum products. And nature is full because of this biodiversity, what I call actually mycodiversity. The more species of fungi you have, the more candidates you have, because each of these species have unique skill sets that can break down certain sets of toxins. So we have really, literally, underneath our feet, the, some of the solutions that we need today to destroy the toxins that humans have been creating. And by breaking down these toxins, they're dismantled into basic nutrients. And then the other plant communities, including the fungi, take those nutrients and rebuild. And so the petroleum hydrocarbon products are rebuilt into fungal carbohydrates, sugars. And so these fungi break down oil and create edible sugars. Now, the question of edibility is, is a complicated question because there's lots of toxins inside of oil. So it's just not one hydrocarbon. These are giant ring structures called aromatic hydrocarbons. And the bigger the ring structure, the more complications and more connections, the more difficult it is to break down. But then the sequence of decomposition as it becomes smaller, the smaller units are easier to break down, which mm -hmm. is logical when you think about it. The more complex, the harder they are to break down, the simpler they are, the easier to break down. But these fungi dismantle these huge complexes into simpler forms. And once that sequence is created, it's like a domino effect. And then all these other organisms can also you know, get into play to help return uh, those nutrients, basically, uh, into the soil. Mm -hmm. and so that's what we do. So how would this be done uh, effectively? If, if you, I mean, do you go out into the Gulf with what and what do you? Well, we're actually doing several experiments right now. Most of the stuff that we've done has been on land. We've been decomposing oil, uh, saturated soil uh, from oil spills on land, and we've been very successful. Um, and now, because it's in, in, on the water environment, We've done experiments, and we're happy to say that oyster mushrooms, which is a land-based mushroom, does tolerate salt water. That was surprising to us, but we did the experiments, and, mm -hmm. and lo and behold, this oyster mushrooms are very, very aggressive, and uh, they're quite tolerant to salt water. We're happy about that. And the oyster mushroom mycelium we wrote on straw, or cereal grasses, it floats. And so the mycelium actually floats on the water, and so we're making now mycobooms to be able to see if we can have the benefit of not only corralling the oil, but the mycelium that's producing these digestive enzymes that can help start breaking it down. Uh, and then you can bring it all onto shore. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have to be very creative about our thinking right now. Uh, the good news is this is way beyond proof of concept. We're breaking down oil with oyster mushroom mycelium. Uh, there's many, many articles in the scientific literature, uh, in my books, other books. There's not just me, Paul Stamets. There's about six other researchers around the world who spent 20 past 20 years do, repeating each other's experiments, adding on more knowledge, mm -hmm. you know, confirmation, et cetera. But now we're into a new, new territory. The, the, the sheer magnitude of this disaster is something that we'll be dealing with for probably decades to come. Um, and hopefully this will be contained. Because as it impairs the food chain, it could unravel the very fabric of the food chains to support life in the oceans and indeed, we are interrelated as land a animals to the ocean environment. Mm -hmm. And so, not to sound too scary, but if we don't get a hold of this, 
uh, it could really get away from us, yep. and this could accelerate uh, a major extinction event where um, our grandkids will be hearing stories about how once beautiful the East Coast of the United States used to be. Right. And that's going to be a distant and fading memory. Hmm. I hope that we don't get there. We need to do something soon. Yeah. Do we have, I mean, are the, is there enough of you know, what you're cultivating to, I mean, can well, we get enough? The, and, very good question. Can hmm. we get enough? Because the whole issue here is scalability. We have done things, you know, uh, by 10 to 50 tons at a time. And the uh, nature has candidate fungi in the Gulf. And these species of oyster mushrooms grow in that area. So we recommend amplifying and native species. I do lots of tissue culture. I can, I can do this. There's no issue about that. I can generate tons of mycelium. But the, the material that we need as the carrier material to grow the mycelium would be on grasses or on wood chips, for instance. And one thing we can be guaranteed is that we have hurricanes and we have storms. And nature will create huge debris fields. And what does the public works departments do? They go around, they clean up the roads, they chip them, and they look for a place to put them. That's exactly what we need. When nature produces the substrates of wood chips or the trees that come down, hmm. the public works department chip them, that exactly at that point of chipping is our opportunity to inoculate. And so nature is the substrate supplier, hmm. and we, as these hurricanes occur and tornadoes and storm events, you know, every city in the United States has public works departments that are cleaning up the, the roads from, from these storms, and it's those chips and straw from farms that we could use to for carrying the mycelium. And as the mycelium digests this material, huge amounts of enzymes are being produced. Right. Oh, that's, that's interesting. All right. Okay. So if you want more information, check out my book, Mycelium Running. How mushrooms can help save the world. It has a big chapter on microremediation. And if you go to our website, fungi.com, I have an evolving statement of microremediation practices that's being updated, that's getting a lot of attention right now. And I have peer reviewed references, photographs. Mm -hmm. I list what we know and what we don't know. I think it's very important for all scientists at this stage in the game to admit and tell people what, what we don't know. And uh, what I don't know, I tell you. And what we do know that we feel very confident in is also listed. So check out our website. Thanks so much, Paul. Thanks.